Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This video features some replays by the Royal Penguin, and we're starting off with a battle, I think this is a Clan Wars battle actually, on the Thunderstorm campaign. We're on the Mines map, and he's in the Clan Wars reward tank, the T95 FB4201 Chieftain. Game on. Well, this is a tier 10 game, and I think we can see which clan it's for, 5HTTR. Not sure what that name is, but uh, obviously he'll probably enlighten us. It's going to be a rather brief battle, and that's why this video is actually featuring more than one battle. In fact, it's featuring four. His first shot is critical hit on a 907. He gets 482 from that. He's now locked on to a TVP, gets a shot into him. 429. Now it's the 120mm gun, capable of doing 440 alpha. You can see it's a fast and furious 10 tier 10s. And the enemy is literally being rolled over. Yeah, he even got some ram damage on that 907. And now he's got him in the sandwich, or I should say spit roast, <laughs> but that has bad connotations. Um, yes. Puts around into the enemy FP4201. There's only four enemies remaining, and some of those actually managed to get up onto the hill. In fact, all of them did. Not that they'll stay there for very long because they're going to be overwhelmed. There's only two left. I think he's going to go around the other side, see if he can cut them off. They'll probably try and escape, and they won't be able to. In fact, the 277 is the last one alive. He gets around him, but he doesn't get the kill shot, and the battle is over, and it lasted 1 minute 50 seconds. Well, that battle was incredibly brief. Uh, and you can see that even though it was brief, the Royal Penguin managed to get a huge amount of damage on the enemy. And we'll have a look at the team scores now to see where he was. Didn't get the most. The most damage was actually done by one of the enemy team. That Object 277, the one that was alive at the end of the game, well, near the end of the game, 3,440 hit points of damage went to him. The C63 on the enemy team managed 3,324 and the third highest damage was actually the STB-1 with 3,274. And we can see the Raw Penguin picked up 2,817 out of that one. When it came to kills, it was the 277 did the best with four kills. Three kills went to the 907, the CS-63 on his own team. And, well, we can see that the Raw Penguin only got the single kill. So it puts him a little way down the table. But let's have a look at base XP. And we can see the top scorer in this one was the Object 907 on his own team. 1,145 went to the other Chieftain. 1,112 went to the 907. Uh, we have to look down to sixth, is it fifth place, sorry. 1,086 base experience points for the Royal Penguin. I'll just describe the, the totals here, so what he managed to get. He earned 40,379 credits in 1 minute 50 seconds. Well, 1 minute 52 to be precise. And he earned 3,339 XP from the game. So very quick, very brief, lots of rapid hits on the enemy. And it did help that he does have an OP tank. But that was pretty brutal for just two minutes. Let's have a look at the second replay. In the second battle, it's on the Himmelsdorf map. And this time we're battling for Province Beckley. So it's Clan Wars Battle. Game on. Well, seeing as it's Himmelsdorf, it probably won't be over as quickly as the Mines Battle. Mines, you all rush together to try and take the hill as quickly as you can in a Clan Wars. But uh, this one, no, I don't think they're going to be doing that. But it looks like they've got a very large contingent. We're going to be going over the hill. In fact, there's a number of their P4201s. In fact, actually, a couple of them decided to turn around and go back. 
I wonder if they're anticipating the enemy is trying a different tactic. The enemy has been spotted, they're down on the railway line. And that kind of means that they need to get back to the cap area and defend against the southwest corner. That's where the enemy's going to be coming in. Nobody, well, there's only one enemy tank on the banana, an object 277, and an E100 at the other end. He's being held in place by an E100 and a mouse. So who have we got up here? Well, the AMX-50B just took a hit. There are a number of enemy tanks, two AMX-50Bs on the enemy team, and one Beacon. And he's just been hit by a Batchat 25 time and came around the corner. He must have been a little quick to get up on top of the hill. The enemy's pumping around this corner. Yeah, they've decided to come around in force. So he's got to cover this corner with the AMX-50 because he's only got a minimal number of shots in his autoloader. And if he wasn't here, then the AMX-50 would go down. Luckily, he has still got some teammates with him. He's using the FB4201s for cover, but he did take a round from the back chat. And again, in fact, he's lost 1,230 hit points to that guy. He retreated when he realized that there were further tanks coming up, but they conquered the hill. And there's a massive engagement going on in the southwest corner of the map. The CS-63 is the only one remaining up. Oh, it looks like the enemies turned around and they're going down the banana now. So I guess the best thing to do is for us to get down the banana as quickly as possible and stop them or head them off on that corner. We're three up on the enemy. There's a real fight going on on this corner here. Our guys have suddenly turned up, but the enemy is in large numbers so he's pushing around straight away takes a round from an E100 using the Rex for cover he's going to try and move up on them goes for the frontal plate you will least defend that with the premium but he actually uses yeah he is using premium APCR bouncing around from the back chat there trying to do it again can he get a shot through that front plate no he doesn't the back chat pops out to try and pump another round in but fails but he gets it on the second one okay so he's loading now can he get the front in no because the guy's angling very well but he did go down in the end it's taken out by the amx 50b and we're pushing on the banana and the enemy's down to just two tanks one of them well both of them are chieftains so here we go just around the corner and he's just managed to pull around in time. Unfortunately, we didn't time that well, but... Okay. We should be able to get a shot into him this time. Go around the corner. Pumps one up his rear. Get a fire. Oh, he's on fire. And he goes for a bit of ram damage as well. The kill shot actually comes in from his teammate, Dragonwater, who just turns up alongside, and they've killed all the enemy. So this one was over in four minutes. Okay, here's the uh, end of battle stats from that one. And in this game, we can see that uh, the Royal Penguin didn't get the uh, highest damage again. It was that E100 who got the most with 5,182, followed by one of their chieftains with 4,058. And third highest also went to another chieftain on their team with 3,606. And we can see that uh, Royal Penguin was the top scorer on his own team with 3,517. And again, the, the next highest after that was an object 279 on the enemy team. When it came to kills, it was actually the uh, his own team who did well because a lot of their guys got two kills each. Unfortunately, the Royal Penguin wasn't one of them. He only got a single kill. And when it came to base XP, it was the CS-63 who did the best. I think he was shooting down from the top of the hill. He got 1,227 base. 1,190 went to the Royal Penguin. 1,171 went to the Object 279 on their team. Giving the totals again, yes, he spammed APCR. And yes, it did cost him because uh, 29,641 credits lost from that game. 1,874 XP gained, but at least they won the battle and I presume they won the province in the process as well. The next battle by the Royal Penguin is in the M4A3 E8 Fury. Yes, it's the reproduction from the film North Spawn of Muravanka. 
Well, the only thing different between this EZ8 and the other EZ8 on the tech tree is, of course, that this one's a premium, which means obviously it earns more credits and XP for the crew, but it's also got slightly better ground resistance and slightly worse on some other stats like camo and view range, that sort of thing. 370 meter view range, anyway. It's got the 76 millimeter gun. It's got a welded hull, which obviously identifies that uh, it's one of the later constructions, what they call the M4A3 brackets 76. It's got the Ford V8 engine, which is, um, well, it was a slightly uh, reduced aero engine that Ford generated originally. And they always say in that uh, in the film um, Ford versus Ferrari, what did Ford do during the war? They built tanks and aircraft, lots of them. And in fact, actually, they had that design of the engine, but it was never actually put into production for as an aero engine. In fact, they had to reduce and take some cylinders out to make it work. But as a tank engine, it was very efficient. Okay. Oh, that was nice. The enemy EZ-8 took a round. It's a 76mm gun, capable of doing 115 alpha. And with the standard ammo, it will go through 128mm of armour with the APCR, which is loaded at the moment. It's 177. Easy round into that 60G. And he gets a high roll. Okay, uh, Chinu took a round. 123 high roll again. Oh, missed it on that one. Okay, T-34 should easily punch through his armour. But he managed to get around into us, and it was a 57mm round. Okay, the enemy easy 8s try to get behind us, but he's taking a lot of damage and will be out of the game. The next shot, yeah, he was having a quick look there because he wanted to work out where the shields were going in, I think. Anyway, the T-14 does have good frontal armor, but he doesn't at the rear, and now he's behind the guy. He'll just punch straight through. Still using the premium ammo, so this is going to be kind of expensive towards the end. He did lose a fair amount of hit points to the T14, and his track's fixed, so he's off and running again. Now, although you don't get Brad Pitt as your commander, you do get a fairly mobile tank with a good, decent gun. I suppose the really good thing about uh, this was that obviously it was. Uh, a big uh, boost to sales for uh, having the, um, the the tank from the film, which is also in the Tank Museum at Bobbingdon. Uh, if you want to have a look at the um, uh, the real one, it's in there. I think that was the same one they actually used in the film as well. Of course, Tiger 131 was also in that film. A lot of controversy of whether or not it was real or legitimate in terms of the fact that uh, Tigers really wouldn't perform the way they did in the movie. I suppose that was for dramatic purposes. Yeah, a Tiger would stay at the back and snipe because he had the gun to do it, whereas uh, in the film they made him move forward to engage the Shermans. He would never do that. He would just stay at the back and pummel them from a distance. Plus, of course, the other main thing from the film was that he would have taken out the first tank to make a roadblock and then he would have taken out the rear tank but since Brad Pitt was in the front tank if he'd done that the movie would have been over at that point. They also had a number of those Tiger shells, number of those 88mm shells missing the target and well they didn't tend to do that that often. German tankers were pretty good and they tended to hit the target when they aimed at it. Of course, a lot of the uh, a lot of the German tankers were also the guys who were involved at Kursk, and so they were up against many many T-34s all at the same time, hundreds of them, literally. Well, he's backing away at the moment because uh, yes, there was an enemy uh, Jagdpanzer Fear up there. He's eyeing him at the moment. He's gone. Okay, so now he can move forward. There's only three enemy left, the Strip 74 and two RT. So they've effectively won this and he's managed to get two and a half K of damage already and now he's 
got it up to close to three. 2700 but possible Pascucci's if he can get both of them but I, I get the feeling that he'll find the griller get a shot into him and then the enemy uh, his teammates will get the m41 he's blind firing at where the griller was last seen the m41's gone lots of RT shells were arc well two RT shells were arcing in there there's the griller one shot's all it takes and they won the battle quite quickly. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was an ace tanker game for the Royal Penguin in the M4A3 E8 Fury. He managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. Hand of God for surviving the battle. Hammer received damage from four different enemies. Bruise the metal for getting at least five critical hits. He got eight in this one and a pyre for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. He got a confederate medal because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. As well as a steel wall for blocking the most damage in the game and surviving. As well as a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game on that one. Let's have a look at team scores and see where he stood. 2,808 hit points of damage went to the Royal Penguin, 1,434 went to the Get Panther, and 1,120 went to the Strip 74 on his own team. Uh, when it came to kills, it was the Strip 74 did the best. He got four kills. It looks like he was sniping more than actually getting involved in the nitty gritty, which is what the Royal Penguin was doing. He was very aggressive, which is why he ended up with the highest amount of hit points. Three kills went to him as well as to the Get Panther and two kills went to the Chi Nu on his own team. Nobody on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill. When it came to base XP, it was the Royal Penguin again with 1,460. That's why he's got the ace. 762 went to the Get Panther. 643 went to the Chi Nu. He fired 34 rounds, got 27 direct hits and 25 penetrations. Damage of 2,808 hit points, of which 539 were at more than 300 meters. Received 13 hits from the enemy, eight of which penetrated five non-penetrations. Yes, the, the Sherman does have fairly weak sides, and he, of course, uh, was side onto some of those enemy tanks while they were punching rounds into him. Uh, 310 hit points of damage blocked by armor, four enemy vehicles spotted, 10 enemy vehicles damaged, three killed, and 1,043 hit points of damage assistance. I think that was spotting assist, actually. 47,684 credits on a premium count, 65,000 from personal missions payout, and after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables took away a profit of 103,229 credits. 1,460 XP times three on this occasion, 657 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 7,227 experience points altogether. You'd be shocked that this was his very first game in the Fury. But of course he treated it like he treats most of his other tanks and was very, very aggressive with the enemy. And it paid off in a big way. That 76mm gun does punch nice holes in the enemy if you uh, use the APCR. And he did use a fair amount of APCR, but he got the return for it anyway as well. And of course he dominated in the Magic Forest, which of course then meant that he was uh, able to uh, pick up some nice little hit points and move uh, south. So that's the end of the third game, and let's have a look at the fourth one. The last battle, the fourth, is on the north uh, spawn of Serene Coast, and it's a T95E6, which is a tier 10 reward tank. Game on. Well, this tank's armed with a 120mm gun, which is capable of doing 400 alpha and penetrating 258 with standard with heat rounds that goes up to 340. Now it's basically in another derivation of the T95 tank. They made a dummy vehicle but it was never accepted into uh, production. As you can see it's got rather a big cupola on top of the roof uh, on the uh, turret which is a fairly obvious weak spot. But, uh, yeah, he's headed for the confrontation point on the west side of the, the map. And he's about to beat somebody. Okay, this time it's... Oh, I didn't see who that was. It was Object 140, but he's being pushed by Skoda T27. He's gone way too deep. And that was an Amarok, I think. He only got 318, I think, out of it. But 
Yeah, the Skoda did go down. He's been Amorak, so he's going to have to use his repair kit. And he has. Standard reload for this one, 7.67 seconds. I think he's got considerably less than that, but because we're not using mods, or trying not to use mods on our re tank replays anymore. Yeah, that gun wasn't aiming in the right direction. In fact, it looks like his gun, his turret stuck in one position. His reticule's aiming elsewhere, so I think that might be a mod failure. Well, not mod failure, because it can't be a mod, it's a virgin client. I think it's a replay failure. Yeah, he's definitely hitting the 140. You can see he's shaking it to one side. I think he knows that the turret's not looking in the same direction. And he did get set alight there, but his fire extinguisher went off. So he's playing regardless of the fact that his turret is not moving either side. And he's just basing his shots on the rescue. And he takes out the 140. This is not the first time I've seen a replay where we've got a stuck turret. We've had three of them recently, and you may have noticed them on our channel. In fact, I think I saw one on the general channel as well. The turret just doesn't move in the replay, and despite the fact you try and run another replay again to see if it'll work, another copy of the replay, it just won't go. So the turret stays in one position, but the gun fires in where you're aiming. Did get a hit on the IS-3. Low roll. Going for the top of the DK. Gets it. 402 high roll. Side of the turret. Easy, but it's a low roll. Yep, that guy's just coming straight on. I don't think he cares, really. He's in an OP premium tank, so thought, what the hell. But he is now taking some punishment. I'm pretty sure the T95E6 is a Clan, Re Clan Wars reward tank, but I'm sure the Royal Penguin will correct me on this if it's not. Object 704, tier 9, with a very nasty gun. Gets a nice little hit into him. Go to the engine. Oh, we missed that one. You don't often see the uh, Royal Penguin miss, but he did in that one. He's now up to 4.6k. And there's only three enemies remaining. There's a Heshbarn, an Emil 2, and a Type 4 Heavy. Well, we all know where all three of them are. They're on the other side. On two of them are Peninsula. The Heshbarn is sniping from that corner. So I think he's just going to go straight for the Heavies, because they've got more hit points than the Heshbarn. No, he's changed his mind. No, he's changed his mind again. Trying to make up which way he was going to go. And oh, not watching where he's going. And I don't think this was a case of he was typing at the time. I think he just was distracted. If he does go after the Emil, he might get shot in the side by the Hesh Barn. But the Hesh Barn's got plenty on his mind at the moment. He's facing a Viz 55. Okay, so Emil gets it right. One on, and that's it. That's all he needs. He's got the kill. Three kills now. And he's been asked to platoon. Did he get it in time? I don't think so. Here's the end of battle results, and that was the first class tanker for the Royal Penguin and the T95E6. The tier 10 American reward premium reward tank. The I think it is a medium tank, actually. Uh, or is it? Actually, I, I don't know. Is it a medium or a heavy? No, it's a medium. It is a medium, definitely. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got ten in this one. He got a duelist for taking down two tanks to damage him and a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, but he didn't get any other medals other than a large score in terms of credits. He didn't get the highest damage, well, he did get the highest damage in the game, but he didn't get the high caliber simply because it wasn't 20% of the enemy hit pool. 4,884 went to him. The next high scorer in the game was the uh, TNH uh, on his own team who managed to get um, 3,925. And the third highest damage was the SU-130PM on the enemy team with 3,504. 
When it came to kills, he shared the top spot with the Viz 55, the TNH, and they all managed to get three kills. The second highest score, well, third highest, fourth, I suppose you should say, because they all shared it. Two kills went to the 122 TM. When it came to base XP, it was the TNH who did the best. He got 1,122, pipping the Raw Penguin to the top spot. He got 1,061, and the third highest was 122 TM with 948. In this one, fired 19 rounds, 16 direct hits, 13 penetrations. I think that turret, he was shaking it because he was trying to make it work. But no, when they when they fail like that, and it is down to Wargaming, I think I'm pretty sure it's a program fault. Um, I, I've seen it replicated in numerous games, well, numerous, three games at least, uh, as well as this one. So I don't think anything will fix it. And it's so, so annoying that the turret won't turn to face the target. Uh, during the battle and you shake it like mad but it won't but it, the the shells are going in the right direction uh, if you aim using the reticule 2406 hit points of damage at long range six hits received four penetrations and two non-penetrations 560 hit points of damage blocked by armor he spotted three enemy vehicles damaged seven of the enemy killed three did 144 hit points of damage assistance in this game he earned 42,417 credits from the game 19,088 from battle payments, 30,000 from mission reward, 112,714 credits altogether, but because he used a lot of premium ammo, he actually ended up with a small loss of 14,451 credits for that game. 1,061 XP, 9,552 from personal missions payout, and 80 because this is a premium reward tank, not a, um, a, a premium that you pay for, therefore you don't get much in XP, 11,224 experience points altogether. So, pretty good games actually by the Royal Penguin. I think he sent them in over a period of time and I've just collated them all together to put them into one big package. Uh, yes, he does set, tend to send me some interesting games every now and then. I keep getting his name mixed up with other players as well. If I do them at the same time as <laughs> some players, I do apologise for doing that. It's, it's just that I'm a crappy presenter and therefore that sort of thing happens all the time. So I hope you enjoyed all those replays. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. That is so cute. I don't even know what to say about that. And don't forget that uh, we do have a sister channel called The General where you can actually see some fantastic replays, top replays, uh, a lot of medals earned in those replays, and uh, they're normally put up only shortly after the uh, battles actually uh, happened, and it's been um, uploaded to what replays, and uh, I'm putting more and more and more of those onto that channel, so you can see it without commentary, so there's nothing to distract you, you just get to see the game exactly as the player saw it himself during that game. Uh, with um, no mods, so it looks much, much better. Thanks for watching.